Hello there, many thanks for joining us in our Monday Business News Report. It's now time to bring you our feature on the show today as we look at activities within the oil and gas sector. Now more and more reactions continue to trail the activities in the fight against illegal oil bunkering and at Zernalf refinery activities in communities within the Niger Delta region. Now River State's Governor Yesamweke has been talking tough and wielding more support to combat this menace. Now he's also urging traditional rulers and the state to join in the fight as much as possible against illegal oil bunkering and artisanal refinery activities in their various communities. Now it's hard for residents of Niger Delta to claim ignorance of this illegal business which produces soot that contaminates the air, destroys rivers and aquatic lives and pollutes land as well as vegetation. Now, currently as well, Port Harcourt Refinery is, Port Harcourt is threatened by soot eman emanating from the illegal refining of crude oil. Syndicates involved in this practice uh, include oil thieves who siphon crude from pipelines, transport it in large wooden boats to artisans who buy and refine the same into various products, mostly kerosene and diesel because of their economic viability. Now, just barely two weeks ago, the federal government processed uh, $98 million and 17.2 billion Naira's partial payments for the ongoing rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt Refining Company as part of efforts to keep the refinery working. Well, joining me now to discuss this and much more from our Abuja studio, I have Chidi Ibiri, Oko Public Policy Analyst. Thank you very much for joining us on the breakfast show this morning, Chidi Ibiri. Thank you for having me. Now, looking at this situation of me. illegal refining activities, all bunkering and a whole lot more from Okrika to Marin Bay's Calabari to Abonima Wharf and even more beyond Ahoda and a whole lot. There are syndicates profiting from this uh, stealing of crude oil at its journal, refining and distribution of its derivatives, mainly kerosene and diesel. Uh, and this is just a situation that's really, really getting worrisome. But what do you make of the response of the strategy adopted by the governor, Yesen Wiki, as he set his target on really dealing squarely with this menace of illegal refining? Do you think this is the best approach? Thank you very much for the question. My brother, I, I, I don't think it's the best approach. Because having, you know, I try as much as possible to you know, to bring a solution because I've been there. F I, I I spent almost two months there to see what is happening there myself, and I, I believe that because of you know the delay delay from federal government to do what they have said because from um, um, special advisor to the president uh, Senator Etienne, I'm quoting him. He said they have had a meeting with those people that are doing all the bunkering. There's a promise the federal government have done. To them, you know, to, you know, to integrate them, you know, but they have, they have not, they have not done that for a long time. But our take, we are not talking about, we are not saying they should make illegal legal, because if you go there, you see that, that if they should, if the way Wiki is doing, it can cause a problem, because I heard that they killed two soldiers there last week. The way they are going about this is not the right approach, and you see the way Nigeria is going now. To talk about, if, you know, representing the um, 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 refinery, I don't think is the is a thing that we can embark on now. Okay, Mr. Oko, if you were to propose, um, so if you were to propose a solution, what would rather be the turnaround move that I think would have a better result? What what I'm saying is this: in everywhere in the world, they do wherever there there's oil, there's something they do. I don't I don't know if I can't call it model refinery. I can't call it, but there's, there's a small refinery they normally do, you know, to help people to help people. You know, it's just small refinery. People can work on that. Do you know that this refinery they are doing this thing they are doing here? I've helped a lot of people. I saw more than fifteen thousand workers that this thing are giving food. I said, government, if government can you know, integrate them. You know, MMPC regulate them, and better equipment. It can cause health hazard because I've seen when they use all this, all this, um, 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 all this fake equipment to construct it under two days, they'll start working. But if government should provide, come in and see what they're doing, provide solution, bring a safety measure. It's, you see a lot of explosion there because all of them they want to just make money in a day and and, and get away with it. But mm. if federal government should come in, integrate them, call them to that if they are ready to buy. I interface with them, I talk to them. That's why I see 
when they say they are going to spend 1.5 billion dollars to update this uh, refinery, I'm not. I, I, in fact, I didn't buy the idea. The way, considering the way things are now in Nigeria. Mm. And I like the fact that you are bringing into focus now, looking at conversations around uh, modular refineries and the government's stance on ensuring mm. that we have the rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt refinery. Now, the refinery is, has already received about $98 million in terms of part of the processing payment, partial payment, and then $17.2 billion naira to that effect to see the ongoing rehabilitation. But in terms of kicking against this move now, you believe that that's not the best approach, but from the stance of government, we need these refineries to start working. Another school of thought does not necessarily see modular refineries as the best solution. Okay. Can you hear me, Chidebere? Hello, come again. Yes, I'm so hearing. my question here is this. Now the government, uh, two weeks ago, began processing $98 million and $17.2 billion naira as partial payments for the rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt refinery. Now, you are also tilting towards the conversation around modular refineries. You have problems with the way government is handling this. But for some, modular refineries is not the absolute solution. We need these four major refineries working, hence the rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt refinery. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I, I, I know that we need that refinery, but it will not get to the hand of those people that are doing it before. If, if you can recall, do you, you, you can recall how, how much they have spent on that refinery for a long time and nothing is happening there. So if they can bring another people that can you know, tell us what is happening, we'll be sure. We'll be sure that they are going to, the money the government are going to bring out, they are going to use it for the refinery. It's okay, but for now, they need this thing. What I'm, what I'm emphasizing about this modular refinery is give, give jobs. I said it can give more than 15,000 uh, Niger Delta jobs. If you see, if you go to uh, my, my, all the Niger Delta state, I visited all the sites of this thing. Do, do you know, I think, how many states? Akwai Bomb, Abia, um, um, Cross River, um, Delta. You, you, I see a lot of people that are, are surviving from this. Federal government that say they are providing, uh, you know, providing jobs, but I'm telling you that each everyone, that all these laborers that work inside, that they make each, they make ten thousand naira in a day. And federal government that are going to give them job, they are going to pay them twenty thousand in, in a day, uh, in a week, in a month. How do you think they can take it? it? It cannot work. But if government should come in and you know hold these people, integrate them, you know interface them, you know control it too. Federal uh, NMPs can be the one that will regulate them with mm. safety measures. All this uh, head hazard will not because I know why WK is talking about it. Everyone, nobody like nobody want nobody like, even it affects me when I was in uh, Petakot. If you come out in the morning, you touch your face, you'll be, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be seeing all the smokes. But if they if they bring better equipment, it will not be like this. So okay, now, Mister, okay, wrapping, uh, uh, wrapping up our conversation. They can. Wrapping up our conversation now, let's also look at one of the biggest issues we are dealing with at this point in time, which has been uh, the importation of adulterated petrol, of uh, specification petrol oh. into the country. How much of a problem do you think the state of our refineries will continue to cause later on in the year if we continue to largely import in terms of the financial implication in terms of the quality we have and even for the average nigerian to afford fuel is difficult by the time we look at the petroleum subsidy regime over when it's time it will be difficult for the average nigerian to be able to afford petrol but now we have lingering fuel scarcity and a whole lot more how do you think things will play out if we don't have these refineries working or we don't tilt to the agenda of modular refineries the, 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 what, what I'm trying, what I'm, but I'm still emphasizing on that modular refinery. If if government provide better equipment, they can refine even f better fuel. They can refine even better fuel. Look at what is happening in Abuja. They are selling for 400 naira as of today, as of today. And the way it is now, they are, they are pushing blames everywhere. They don't know who to hold. Is it NMPC? Is it the um, 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 people that are selling from filling station? But all we, all, all I'm saying is this: Let's do the right thing. Let's government. We have people that can do this. Mm. We cannot blame government in everything because okay. they have all this quality control. People that normally look. Hello? Okay. Hello? 
Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much you. for your time on yeah, the yeah. breakfast show this morning, Chidebere Oko. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. And we also hope that government takes necessary actions to ensure that we have a well-sanitized oil and gas sector. Thank you very much once again. No, we can't stop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.